What's up guys, it's Wasabi and I'm back with another review. Today we have something a little different. This is the first time we are having a gaming headset on this channel. So this should be interesting if you're in the market for gaming headset. As usual, this video is not sponsored. These are my personal thoughts and my experiences with the product. And I'm sure you already guessed it. This is the Pro X2 Lightspeed by Logitech. Uh, it looks like someone forgot the handle with care label. Packaging of the Pro series in 2023 looks like this. Very minimalistic and an interesting way to present the USPs of the product. Inside the box, you get the Pro X2 Lightspeed headset. And the one that I have today is in white. There are three color options, black, white, and magenta, which is their pink colorway. You get the wireless USB receiver for Logitech's Lightspeed wireless connection. Lightspeed is basically their way of saying 2.4 gigahertz. Every brand has their own way of saying it. This receiver is a little bit different. There is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on this one. The packaging for this headset is rather interesting because there's a lot of hidden compartments where you can find all the accessories of the headset. Just watch as I dismantle this packaging and you'll see what I mean. In this part of the box, you find a nice pouch they've included for your headset. It's a rather soft and stretchy material. It's rather nice that they've included this to protect your headset while you're traveling or you want to protect it from dust on your setup. You get this detachable mic very nice and bendy and the little sock on the mic can be removed for washing and the last bit of this component is an instruction manual in what looks like a divider right here you get the USB-C charging cable and a 3.5 millimeter audio cable you can use this headset with the cable for a wire connection and the last thing you can find in the box are these really nice ear cushions these are a lot lighter and much more breathable than the ones that come included it's nice of Logitech to give consumers the option to decide which ear pads they like better. Because a bad practice, if you notice, is that some companies would release two versions of the same thing, but with ear cushions of a different material. And I think that's an absolute ripoff to charge one more than the other. So yeah, this is all you get right off the box. Like what I do with all my review videos, I'm gonna start by setting some expectations here. Today I'm sharing with you my thoughts and experience of a gaming headset. And you know, gaming headsets, the audio and mic quality are generally known to suck. To help you understand a bit better of where I'm coming from, this review is after using a pair of IEMs. And you gotta keep in mind, this is not a professional audio review. I'm not an audiophile by any means. I am a casual gamer and these products appeal most to, well, gamers in general. On the bright side, this review coming from a casual gamer, perhaps maybe you casual consumers can relate to this video a lot better. And before using IEMs, gaming headsets were my main choice of audio for gaming. So this is the Pro X2 Lightspeed by Logitech. And I must say that the design is not the most gamerish thing out there. It looks like something you'll find in a recording studio and I quite like the professional look of it. This being the white colorway comes in a combination of white and silver accents and I think this looks super polished. This looks so nice. When you first get your hands on this, the materials feel really good. The stitching is very well done. The cushions feel plush and supportive. The ear pads, the same as well. These are very nicely done. I do like this little detail of the coil cables on both the left and right ear cup. The metal bracket here feels very solid. And for a headset going at this price, I think this is something that makes it worthwhile. I was honestly surprised at the build quality of this thing. I was not expecting something this solid from Logitech. Not to say that all that stuff is bad. This feels like a very premium headset. With gaming headsets, one of the biggest things for me is being able to detach the microphone. And that's because I like to use an external mic such as this one. This is the Elgato Wave 3. And external mics have been very useful for me. They sound good, let alone much better than any mic you find on the headset. And I can use it for content creation, which is what I do with this channel. All controls can be found on the left ear cup of this headset. And you can see the buttons and switches over here. They feel all right. The volume wheel feels rather nice. It's smooth and there's a nice amount of resistance to it. There are no steps to it. It's just a smooth, limitless scroll to this wheel. Let me just adjust the lighting because it's been blinding me this whole video. Okay, I think I think that looks good. Moving on to how it feels, the comfort you get out of the Pro X2 Lightspeed is very nice. And you know when people say comfortable, it can mean a lot of different things because people appreciate comfort differently. In this case with this headset, the best way to describe the comfort is, let's use mattresses as an example. This is not the sort of comfort you get from a super soft mattress, 
that makes you feel like you're sleeping on a cloud. This is the kind of comfort that's more like a firm mattress. It gives you a nice amount of support and a snug fit. But bottom line, I must say, this is a comfortable headset. There is a lot of room for adjustments with this headset. As you can see, the bands can be extended quite a bit and it is quite a flexible design. The one thing that I like most about this headset is how you can rotate the ear cups, which makes placing it on your neck so much more comfortable than headsets that are locked in like this. So if you have a habit of resting your headset around your neck, this is something that will feel very comfortable for you. The biggest thing about this headset are the new graphene drivers that Logitech is using for this model. Not to go too much into the technical details, but graphene is the material that Logitech used to construct the diaphragm for these drivers. More accurately, the part of the driver that vibrates to produce sound. The lightweight and rigid material of graphene reduces the distortion in the sound output. In short, it enhances the clarity of your sound, making it easier to distinct the different sound elements in your audio. But does this material really make a big impact to justify its price? I would say no, but the headset does sound good. Experiencing this headset while gaming, the audio experience was pretty good. I could hear footsteps, different elements in the background pretty clearly. Lower frequencies on this headset do not drown out the details of the mids and highs, which is something I prefer for gaming headsets. I don't like it to be too bass heavy. That drowns out a lot of the detail. When it comes to competitive gaming, you prefer something a bit more balanced and not too bass heavy. Like, like this one. But in conclusion with how I feel about the sound, as a casual gamer, this sounds pretty good. If you want to further improve the sound, you can tweak the equalizer settings on G-Hub, but that's something I'll get into later. The sound quality you get out of this microphone, I will have to say, is pretty bad. Nothing that will make your friend's ears bleed in the Discord call, but just not the quality you expect out of a headset of this price. So now let's hear what the audio sounds like on this mic. Audio testing 1, 2, 3. This is the mic on the Pro X2 Lightspeed without blue voice on. Testing 1, 2, 3. This is a recording of the Pro X2 Lightspeed microphone connected via Bluetooth to the iPhone. When it comes to connectivity options, this is where the Pro X2 Lightspeed ticks all the boxes. The expected connection for wireless gaming is a 2.4 GHz connection which is what you have with the wireless dongle. If you want to use the headset outside of gaming, let's say you want to take it to the office and use it for music, you can connect it via Bluetooth to your phone. Furthermore, if you prefer a wired connection, there is a 3.5mm headphone jack that you can connect via the cable that's included with this headset. What you need to know is that the USB-C charging cable only acts as a charging cable. You cannot listen to music via that connection. So in short, wired charging and wired audio are two separate things. But of course, if you can get a headset like this, you get it for the wireless experience. Wireless range for this headset goes up to 30 meters, which is a very long distance in my opinion. You know the thing that worries me when I use a wireless headset is that sometimes when I go to the bathroom mid-game, <laughs> My headset is still working and the mic is still on. So out of nowhere in the Discord call, it suddenly sounds like it's raining outside. And that's because I forgot to mute my microphone. On the website, it does say that this headset is compatible with the PS5, but it does say that it's only for USB wireless stereo. I'm not so sure about the microphone itself. g is where you can configure all your settings for the headset. When you connect the headset to g for the first time, you're greeted with this nice introduction. And this intro lets you set the basic settings for this headset. You can can rename your device and enable hardware noise reduction which you can find here which i think is quite a strange place to put this setting i think that they should put it in the mic setting section but it's here if you're wondering over here you can freely adjust these five sliders to create your ideal sound profile you can save your settings to onboard memory it's really nice for people who would connect this headset to their phone or console because with onboard memory you get to use your last save eq settings no matter which device you use this headset with these are my go-to settings which I basically use for everything, gaming, music, and movies as well. Feel free to pause the video and try this out if you have the 
credit set. If not, Logitech has already included some presets you can try out and figure out which sound profile is to your liking. I think the best part about Logitech products with G-Hub is that there are community created presets which you can pick from. So if you're not sure how to adjust the sliders to get a good sounding sound profile, then the community created presets is something that would be very useful. Surround sound can be enabled in this tab. I honestly don't use surround sound. Stereo audio is more than good enough for me. Especially when I use it for gaming, I feel that the stereo audio sounds the best. This is a personal preference. You might like surround sound with this headset. Give it a try. There are a lot of settings you can experiment with and figure out if this is something you enjoy. What I like is that you can set different audio profiles files for each game. So for example, let's say I play Valorant, I want something that's very crisp and clear. In this case, I have a community profile loaded in. This is one of the popular community presets that's made for Counter-Strike and Valorant. So what I can do is save this to my Valorant profile and every time I launch Valorant, the EQ will change to this preset. So I don't have to keep switching out the EQ when I want nice sounding music or when I want something very clear and suitable for a game like Valorant. This tab is where you can configure the microphone settings. I'd highly recommend to enable Blue Voice and create a profile of your own or use one of the presets they've already included. Or look up on the community presets and choose something that sounds good. And again, this is very helpful if you don't want to spend hours figuring out which is the best settings for this microphone. Battery life on this headset has been extremely good. With my experience, I've never had to charge it for almost over a week and it's been performing flawlessly. But also to note, I do not use the microphone on this headset. So that might have helped with the battery life in some way. But what's stated on the website is that it lasts up to 50 hours. So in conclusion, here are some of the things that I like about this headset. The combination of materials used on this headset feels like it's price and the comfort is very good with this one. The quality of sound you get out of this headset is generally good. It sounds great for gaming. Nothing mind-blowing with its graphene drivers and all that stuff but the sound really is above average at best. And interestingly enough that is already a very high praise for a gaming headset. Community profiles on G-Hub. It's so convenient to be able to download what other people use. It makes it very user-friendly and I like that a lot. The last thing I can think of at the top of my head right now is the extra ear cushions they've included with the headset. And at a price like this it's really nice to include extra ear cushions of different material. Because for example, I live in Singapore and it's a very humid country. So ear pads like this is gonna feel very hot and sweaty. That is if I don't switch on the air conditioning. So for gamers who find it too hot and too stuffy with this material, they can swap it out for the much lighter, softer ear pads they've included. So what are some of the things I feel can be improved with this headset? The audio is good, but they should not stop there. They should always try to improve the audio quality because gamers enjoy an immersive experience, not just for multiplayer games, but for single player games as well. And audio is a big part of such immersion. And for sure, this microphone can be improved. I don't think that it's unusable in any way, but you know, these days gamers want the best and this microphone is far from the best. The next thing they need to improve is add advanced EQ to G-Hub. It seems to be a setting that's missing for the Pro X2 Lightspeed. I'm not too sure why. Maybe they just want to keep things simple. This headset is very expensive. At $249.99, this is quite a premium. You gotta pay for a wireless gaming headset. It looks and feels great in person, but the price is a bit of a stretch. If you prioritize the mic quality on a headset, very much this is a headset you should avoid. If you are looking for a wireless experience, this is one of the more attractive options you can find on the market right now. I love how it looks like such a clean and professional look for gaming and it matches so well with the Superlight 2. I mean, look at that. The coding on both these products are pretty similar. If you have a Superlight 2 and you want to get a matching headset, this looks very nice together. You don't get a mind-blowing audio or mic experience from this headset. You get a lot of good materials and a good quality build and wireless connectivity made for gaming. So there are more affordable wireless options out there, but for the quality and style of this headset, it's a pretty tough one to beat. But really the bottom line is that if you have the money to buy one of these, 
you probably won't be disappointed. If you're not an audiophile and you just appreciate a nice design product with good materials, this is something that can justify its price for you. But if you're someone who prioritizes the audio experience above everything else, this is not a headset I would recommend. You'll get a much better audio experience from a wired headset that probably costs a lot less. I have a question for you gamers out there. Are headsets still something you consider buying for gaming? Because I know a lot of gamers who moved on to IEMs. Let me know in the comments below. Hope you've enjoyed this review. Remember to leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.